Welcome everyone to Connected Learning TV and the final webinar in a month-long series titled Digital Badges, Opening New Pathways to Opportunities. I'm Tara Brown, Technical Director at the Digital Media Learning Research Hub, and I'll be your host for the today. Throughout September, we've been exploring the connection between digital badges and pathways to new academic and economic opportunities. Today, we're going to chat about the do's and don'ts of creating your own digital badging system. Before we dive into our chat, we have a few quick details to go over. To those participating on our live stream right now, we encourage you to use the chat there to introduce yourselves, connect with each other, and ask questions that we can address right here in the Google Plus Hangout. And speaking of Google+, there's a fast-growing connected learning community with over 2,600 members. We would love for you to be part of the badges conversation happening there. The link to the G+, community will be added to the live stream chat. The link for our public group notes, Google Doc for today, should also be in the live stream chat by now. And which is awesome because if you ever like me, where you put notes into the chat and you close the window and you lose them, it's horrible. So please use that Google Doc. Uh, we'd really appreciate your energy in capturing highlights and sharing resources related to today's conversation. And that Google Doc will remain open to the public so we can continue adding to it even after today. I am so excited by the folks that we have here today on the Hangout. I've had the pleasure to work with them on uh, badges in the past, and I want each of them to have an opportunity to introduce themselves. So let's start with the lovely Carla. <laughs> Thank you, lovely Tara. <laughs> um, so, hi everybody. I'm I'm pleased to be here to discuss in this fabulous panel talking about bad system design. That's actually um, the thing that I focus on the most at um, at Mozilla. I am the bad system design lead and also kind of the director of services, helping people think through what it is to start to create badges and badge systems. Um, so I'm focused on um, exactly, I think, the questions that will be coming up today, and then also sharing back that information with the general public. So while all this information comes into us, um, because we are essentially kind of a, a, a signpost or a stop off for a lot of people, then we get to share that information back out. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Carrie? Oh, you're muted. <laughs> Hi, I'm also a newbie on uh, Google Hangouts. Excuse me, but I'm Carrie Lemoy. I'm from Coterie. I'm the uh, web technologist from, uh, from our team. Uh, what we're doing is delivering badge solutions. We've been doing it for a little over a year now. First as part of the Digital Media and Learning Competition with uh, the Providence After School Alliance. Then we made some uh, fun tools like uh, Badge and Gadget Lite, uh, the Open Badge uh, module for Drupal, uh, the Fun Badge Bingo, which is a displayer. And now we are working on Achievery, which is a, like a multi-tool for issuing badges. I have my Badge Bingo badge in my yes. Mozilla Open backpack. <laughs> All right. Fun Badge Bingo. Awesome. Thank you. Lucas? Uh, hey everyone, uh, my name is uh, Lucas Blair. I'm one of the co-founders of uh, Little Bird Games. Uh, we were a finalist in the Badges for Lifelong Learning competition. Um, our entry was called Badge Forge, and uh, my, also my dissertation was on using video game achievements, or if you prefer, badges, um, to enhance player performance, self-efficacy, and motivation. And that's uh, that research is kind of is is what drives all the things that we make today. So, thank you so much. Well, we agreed to try something new here on Connected Learning TV, and that is because everybody has slightly different processes as they're thinking about badge systems and design, that we would present uh, you all with a use case that hopefully you can relate to, and then uh, Carla, Carrie, and Lucas will sort of respond in how they might approach that problem. So hopefully this works out. Um, so here, here it is. Uh, Bob is a librarian who works with teens. His library is running a program this summer where the youth will build LED light boxes that will be assembled into a big mural. He's thinking it would be super cool to give the kids a badge at the end of the project. Just one badge. Later, he might create more badges if his library is really into it. Other libraries in the system might be interested, but he's not really sure yet. So he just wants to design this one badge for now, or this one badge program for now. So um, I think that's hopefully general enough for everybody that's watching can uh, relate to it. Uh, so, um, well, let's keep going left to right, at least from where I'm looking. So Carla, 
from from what you just heard, how might you approach this? Um, so I think it's a really interesting example, and, and we're really psyched whenever we hear that librarians want to start issuing badges because it's become it's the general like learning out of school spot that a lot of kids experience. So I'm always excited to hear about those badges. Um, one thing that I would encourage the um, librarian to do is to really think very seriously about what kind of goal they're aiming for with this badge by issuing the badge, not just because we want to issue a badge, but instead because there's some kind of significant learning or experience that's happening that the badge is actually a representation of. So I would say from, from that standpoint, definitely thinking through what the badge is and what it's meant to do. And then also who might be the consumer of that badge. So once the badge is issued, what would the earner think when they get that badge? And then what would somebody else who the earner might show this to, what might they think about that badge? So kind of thinking about the life cycle of a badge is a really useful um, place to start. And then realizing that you have many different audiences who are working within that. So I'm going to leave that as a short kind of nutshell response so everybody else can get, jump in. So I have a question. Um, in this case, it sounds like both it would be the same person, this Bob the librarian, would be the issuer and the endorser, in, or the library would be the endorser. I'm just wondering, you know, uh, what, what that would look like, if that's okay. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Um, so it, endorsement is coming. It's not here yet, but it is something that is really exciting and will kind of change the whole tenor of a lot of bad systems. So yeah, absolutely. Um, Bob, Bob's the librarian, right? That's his mm -hmm. name. So, <laughs> so Bob um, could issue the badge, and then ultimately when endorsement comes online, then he could say, like, I'm issuing this badge individually, but because I'm a member of, let's say, the Chicago Public Library, because I'm a librarian within that system, then he could get the Chicago Public Library to endorse that badge. And what that means is then the Chicago Public Library also signs their name to that badge. So it starts to carry a different kind of weight within the system, within the ecosystem. Um, and it may be that there are other libraries who are equally interested in Bob's badge and then they could also sign their names to that as well. So maybe he gets one from the New York Public Library and, and some small local library or the Los Angeles Public Library. They don't get enough shout out. Um, so, so, LAPL. Um, <laughs> LAPL, exactly. Um, so, uh, so any one of those things can come into play once um, endorsement hits. And it, it's really interesting because it does change the value of badges within the system. So um, yeah, absolutely. Thanks for mentioning it. Well, I look forward to it. Uh, thank you so much, Carla. All right, let's move on to Carrie. Hey there. Um, I think I would second a lot of what Carla says. Carla will find that I often agree with many things she says about badges. But um, I'd also think that he may want to think beyond just, just that one badge, even though he's only giving out one. Um, because that one badge could lead to other things. So thinking through the criteria, I think, is pretty important. I also think that evidence, like what kind of cool evidence can you show for that? Something that really like, you know, shows what the students have done. Um, those parts are, 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 I mean, we think evidence, like, you know, photos, any sort of graphic that can really explain what the badge um, or did is, is really critical. Do you have, uh, Carrie, do you have any sort of template that you use to capture ideas for a badge and lay out the description, the criteria, and who's issuing it, etc.? I don't like to say we necessarily have a, a template for it. Um, we've looked at some of them out there, and they're all great. Um, I think, you know, we always go through a discovery process with everyone who's doing badges. So we talk through all those critical points, you know, what are the outcomes of the badge, and, and um, you know, what, what is the criteria associated with it, and really try and draw that out. Um, and then, of course, the badge design of the image itself comes in later. Um, but that also ties into the library. You know, how is that badge image tied into the library and also, um, you know, the, the badge itself, the program itself. When I was working with Carla and Sunny Lee at Mozilla on some badge designs, uh, they came up with a template using Excel, which I love, and I actually want to share it. Um, if Carla's, I'm sure she's fine with it, but I do want to share it because yep. it's really helped everyone get on the same page in terms of, you know, what information needs to be included in the badge, and it's simple. It's a spreadsheet, um, and it was really helpful. We had additional. Uh, we had a. a problem or a, um, another sort of barrier for us in that our actual 
UI designer didn't speak any English for this particular project. And so we, we used this great spreadsheet, but then we had to kind of make uh, write this summary about the badge in a way that anybody could really understand and, and translate. So I think like something like that would be, I'd love to, to share with people because I feel like, again, it just made everyone get on the same page and understand badges so they weren't this weird, scary thing. So uh, John, remind me to share that. <laughs> um, I actually have it queued up, so oh, I can share awesome. it later. Oh, awesome. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Awesome. Okay. Thank you, Carrie. Uh, Lucas. Okay, I had to unmute myself there. Um, so I, I, I think I agree with what, you know, everything that Carl and Carrie said. And you know, one of the things that Carrie said about, about thinking kind of long term or planning for something bigger than an individual badge, I think is important, especially if this badge might potentially be part of a series of incremental badges or, or a met, maybe like a meta badge or something like that where there, you know, there are a bunch of badges. I think it's important to plan that stuff out because you you wouldn't want to get in a situation where maybe de you know six months later you want to make these other badges, but then it, they don't really make sense with this one you've already issued. So it's better to plan out an entire, you know, plan out everything up front. Um, and then I think something else to think about is that, you know, if you're going to award a badge, if Bob is going to award a badge for a single thing, and it sounds to me like it would be a, a, a badge for completing a task. So not necessarily task measurement, but task completion. So you completed this thing. I, I always like to try to think of ways where you could make a badge for task measurement instead of completion. So not you participated in this light box thing, but instead maybe you contributed this many lights or maybe you spent this many hours. And it's a way to drive people to hopefully performance beyond maybe what they think they would normally do. Because instead of just, it's it's binary if it's just a completion. It's just either we're there or you weren't. As opposed to maybe you completed, you know, 100 lights or 200 lights or 300 lights. And it's a way to get more out of people and kind of motivate them and make them see that, you know, hopefully set, select some goals for themselves that maybe they wouldn't have otherwise. So I always kind of gravitate towards more measurement badges as opposed to completion ones. So uh, I'm, I want to touch on a point you said where it's good for you to map out as many badges ahead of time so you don't run into the problem where you've designed one and then it doesn't make sense with the rest. Um, so I, is that also a barrier for a lot of people if they have to really sit down and spend a significant amount of time thinking about all these badges when really it's just you want them to just start, you know, and one is a, a good starting point? Um, I I think it's important enough that it's better to contribute the time up front. It doesn't take as long as what you would think, and it's not as daunting as what you would think. I mean, teachers do it all the time when they when they plan out learning objectives and curriculum. I know maybe Carla's laughing because she disagrees, but I, and I'm not saying you have to go into an incredible amount of detail. Like, but you know, maybe plan out just like look ahead and say maybe we want a total of ten badges. Well, what would they be? Or map them to a pre-existing curriculum. Like if you already have all of your learning objectives and, and your plan, you know, everything planned out, it's not very hard to look in there and kind of isolate, well, this might be a badge and this might be a badge and this might be a badge. And then I think it's I don't know. I I think it's worth it to spend the time up front because if you have to, you know, if you get in a situation later on where you know a badge you've already handed out to people doesn't really jive with what you're trying to do. I, I don't know, but maybe, I don't know, Carla laughs, maybe you should ask her. <laughs> <laughs> I only laugh because I think that definitely proves what your background is because it makes sense within um, your instructional design thinking and kind of the concept of game design absolutely makes it perfect sense. I think for a lot of people, the idea of developing a whole system is terrifying. And um, and I think that, that, that Tara makes an excellent point when she says, you know, when people are thinking about maybe one badge, because I don't know that everybody who's on the call today is actually the kind of um, has thought through what their entire curriculum might be or what their entire learning arc might be. And so, um, and so I think that both of these answers are, are appropriate and correct. Yes, I, I agree with you. I, it would be fantastic if everybody could think through their entire system to begin with. But um, it's also useful for people who are new to the concept to be able to kind of dip their toe in the water and say, okay, developing one badge wasn't that bad. Um, and then seeing whether or not they can grow it from there. Um, and it, it's interesting because the point that you've made is an excellent point, Lucas, about um, you don't want to necessarily introduce badges that you then have to pull later. Um, this is actually something that happened to us at Mozilla, where we didn't necessarily pull badges, but we created this series of webmaker badges, and then we stopped issuing them at a certain point because we were rethinking them, and the teams kind of shifted a bit, and so now we've gotten there 
question like well, where are those badges why can't I earn them and and you have to do some interesting dancing in order to have a good response to that so um, so absolutely in some ways we're in a constant pilot mode and I know that that's difficult for a lot of people but it is something that's really useful to think about maybe piloting a few things to start with great thanks Carla okay so I'm, I'm looking specifically that you know, Bob's group of kids at the summer program are building an LED light box and then they're going to assemble it into a big mural. So I guess Bob is thinking, okay, there's, there, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that could go into making an LED light box, right? I mean, there's potentially, you know, some electronics that are in, you know, that they have to work on. There's the, you know, thinking about the artistic mural that they're putting together. What are your thoughts on, you know, is that a lot for one badge? Would you perhaps break that up into more than one badge? Like, what, how would you approach, you know, thinking about, um, you know, the, the criteria for, well, I mean, it's kind of backwards. Like, he's thinking about building this thing and then kind of thinking about what the criteria is to get there to earn this badge. Anyone? Carrie? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, having a participation badge, and you know, is a decent start if you're just getting started. You know, if, if you're not sure where to go, and, and you know, so you, you have a participation badge. So this happened, this was the end. But yeah, I mean, a project like that, you're right, is very complicated, and it could be like, suppose it takes six weeks, and suppose every week there's different things. So maybe there is a badge for every week. So that's sort of stepping through that and trying to think through what could be uh, the steps for each part. Um, I think that's a really valid approach. Yeah, right, because there could be a lot of skills that, you know, you have to use in order to work on this entire project. And in some cases, I imagine not everybody is tackling every bit of the project. You know, they split up into whatever, you know, they want to tackle. So, I don't know. In my, when, I, when I was reading through this use case, I'm thinking, well, that could be many badges. <laughs> but I like, I like the participation as a first approach to this. Like, hey, you helped make this awesome project and participated, and that's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, those discrete skills are, are great, though, to recognize. So, yeah, both ways. And I don't know if this is too granular, you know, or harsh, perhaps, but, you know, would you even be thinking about when you're like, do I issue this badge to these participants? What if one kid put in a lot of effort, another, you know, youth didn't put in a lot of effort? I mean, is that something that, you know, folks should be thinking about when they're thinking about issuing the badge? Competition's a tricky thing. Mm -hmm. I, oh, sorry, Carrie. If, I didn't know if I. No, could no. Go ahead. Go ahead. But, <laughs> yeah, I. Competition is the kind of thing that I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't make competitive badges. I don't really try to. I even with games, I, I I try to avoid competition, especially for learning stuff, because you end up alienating people who are maybe new, or you know, the one the one way to avoid that kind of thing. Or, or at least accommodate it a little bit better is something that competitive video games do, and they call it a ladder system. So you group people or players or earners or whoever with uh, other participants who are at the same skill level as them. So beginners are participating with beginners, and they can only other see it because I'll, I'll, you know, otherwise, if you start, you know, if you see everybody earning these amazing badges that you just can't do, or 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 and they're or you know they're earning them because you didn't earn them because it's a competitive thing then I think it can be kind of demotivating uh, for you know for for earners yeah I agree oh sorry um, I was gonna say too the other thing is you can also offer the option of peer um, assessed badges which starts to cover some of that and it does I mean there are lots of ways to game every system right and peers can often award each other badges because they're oh you're my best friend BFF so I will issue you a badge but at the same time I mean I think that's another way to start getting around it and and there are different types of assessment that you can think about badges when it comes to your system that you don't need to be the, the expert all the time and that sometimes even self-assessment is really really meaningful especially if you're asking someone to think about how they might earn that badge if they pledge so when you pledge for a badge it would mean like there's a badge that exists out there and you say I want to get that badge publicly so you publicly announce that and then you work towards that and then maybe there's a badge at the end that someone gets to issue to themselves because they've accomplished a series of badges or a badge pathway and then they can say wow this is meaningful to me but it's also meaningful publicly and here's why um, so there's lots of different ways to start to work around the fact that that diff there are different levels of experience and different levels of interest um, in addition to the idea Idea of having some expert assessed badge um, and I totally agree with Carrie about um, participation badges 
sorry, participation badges um, were, were one, the things that we tried to avoid for a long time when we first started with um, um, with badges, with badge design, and then we found that um, they were actually really important. And the Chicago Summer of Learning, one of the things that we <laughs> We realized kind of almost when the thing was about to start is, hey, wouldn't it be amazing if you didn't necessarily get any other badges, but you went to some experience and you got a badge that said you were part of this entire experience so that, A, it starts to get you into the world of, into the world of badges, but then it also starts to give you, um, I think, different understanding about how complex and interesting badges can be. Um. So I was just reading our live stream chat and uh, autonomy, I think, uh, it says, I wouldn't do peer awarding for my first badge. It is trickier to design assessments that peers can perform, more complicated than one person evaluating. What do you think about that? Um, I think that it depends on your comfort level. I think that there are people who might actually issue peer badges. Um, one thing that I can reference uh, that um, Alex Halliday is introduced when they designed badges, when they were working with badges with his school when he was at Quinnipiac, is the entire class actually got together and they decided what the goals were for the badge and then everybody kind of pledged to that badge and so it was public, everything was public about that badge. And so it was kind of peer assessed um, because you could look at other people and say like, are they actually achieving what everybody agreed to that we were all going to achieve? So it was, it was kind of peer slash expert, it was this interesting combination of those two things. But um, if you are more comfortable issuing an expert assessed badge, um, and again, even within the world word of expert assessed, there's all kind of different assessments, summative, formative, you know, Dan Hickey's into transformative um, assessment. So there's lots of different kinds of assessment, and I think that's often the question that people get stuck on is, well, how do we guarantee, like once we figure figured out what, what this badge is, who decides that someone gets this badge, and what are all the things that go into it? Carrie or Lucas, did you have any thoughts on the participation or any other thoughts? No? Okay. Well, okay, so just sort of rounding out the this particular use case that we're on. So Bob the Librarian, he's figured out the criteria for this badge. Perhaps it's participating in this project in whatever shape and form that looks like. You just showed up. That's always, you know, the 80-20 rule, I feel. And um, so question for you, he, so he thought about this, now he needs the design for the badge. Not everybody has a wonderful designer that knows what they're doing in Photoshop. So what are some options for people to even, uh, you know, think about what the badge should look like so it doesn't look, you know, so it looks nice. <laughs> and then there's, I know there's other things to even think about, you know, um, with the badge design itself, you know, in terms of like a color palette, and especially if you are thinking more long term, like like Lucas was was suggesting. Lucas, did you want to start with that one? Um, yeah, and my my advice for this is probably going to be like the instructional design, game design thing earlier, because I have artists on staff, so I've never, I've, I've, I just say make this thing. Um, so we so, should have everybody go to you. Yeah, no, badge. don't come to, don't come to me. <laughs> um, but. I, I, I think one of the important things to to think of, it, at least in terms of artwork and stuff like that, is, and it kind of goes back to something we were talking about earlier with with incremental and meta badges, where it could be a series of badges. So, or, or maybe uh, I should uh, explain my terminology here. A meta badge is a badge for earning other badges. So, like if you've got these five related things, and there's this other badge that represents, you know, this person has earned all five of these. But what I'm trying to say is that when, when badges are related like that, you want them to kind of have a similar look and a similar feel. And then also, for incremental badges that are in a series, think about, you know, we do the, so for the Olympics, we have bronze, silver, gold, and everybody knows what that means. So think about, if you're going to pick a color, then you think about what colors would would be before or after that to maybe indicate some level of of performance and you know so in terms of artwork aesthetics I don't I don't know how if I have much to uh, add to that I know that you know you, you you want if a badge is something that represents an accomplishment or something that you, that that has been done it, it should visually reflect that I mean other you know you don't want it to be random you want someone to look at a badge in my opinion anyway and get some indication of what it was for. And then that will make them, you know, maybe explored further and say, oh, well, those criteria, you know, to you know, check out their criteria and stuff. But it get, seems get like the, the look, like it, like how the artwork seems like really important because if it, 
you know, doesn't look great, then I don't know. Do you think that in some ways it actually, the value of that badge lowers because it doesn't look like a good, you know, a nice looking badge you'd want to put in your backpack or on your web page or whatever? I, I, I think the aesthetics mean, and so I'm, uh, I'm sure Carla and Carrie can chime in here, but I, I think the aesthetics probably Badges mean a lot. Badges are important to people for a lot of different reasons, and I think aesthetics is one of them. But I, in my opinion, it would be lower than because a badge can be ugly. But if everybody thinks you're awesome for having it, I would wear it on my shirt every day. So I, I don't know. Maybe maybe Carrie and uh, Carla can chime in. I'll I'll jump in. Um, I think to some people, the badge image is really important. Um, we work with a bunch of high school students, and we um, we brought them in to help them design the badge. Um, and, and they were very particular about what they wanted their badges to look like. And um, depending on the age range and maybe the demographic, then the badge design image is, it, it can be pretty critical. Um, it, they will rate importance based on what things look like. You don't really want them to maybe, but the, it, I think it might happen. Um, so uh, yeah, it is pretty important. I think branding is also very important when it comes to badges, especially if you're going to have a series of badges. Um, being able to have you know, your brand recognized that I think is important to badge issuers. Um, yeah, those are my thoughts on badge design so far. Remember Jess Klein wrote an awesome blog post on uh, badge design a while back. Uh, maybe I can track that down and post it. Uh, I thought it was pretty great. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Um, I think from a design standpoint, um, you know, obviously I think we're all agreeing with one another <laughs> because I think we all have similar approaches when it comes to thinking about how badges work. Um, I would say um, there are, you know, the, the points that you raised earlier, Tara, about like having a consistent color um, scheme and, um, and even the idea about naming and the idea if you're going to use typography, what's that going to look like and understanding that badges have to be reduced to very small sizes. So in some ways you're actually designing a whole series of logos, right? So that in the same way that you do logo design, that you need to have things that can scale really far up and really far down. And maybe there are um, some color differentiations. And I know some of the stuff that we worked on together, there were they, the badges were beautiful at a certain size but could not scale downward and um, and so that's something to think about when when badges start to move into a mobile world exactly what happens then um, but there's there's lots of things in the same way that I put together that bad system design template I'm actually starting to put together um, a, the same kind of worksheet for badge design itself just so people can kind of keep keep in mind all the things that, are, and there's a lot of things, so there's a lot of things that go into the content of the badge, and Lucas's point is extremely well made, and it's one that I actually made a little earlier in another symposium I was talking at, is while the visual is really important, um, if the badge content is really what's driving, or if it's representative of something that's really fantastic, then that badge will still carry a huge amount of weight. But yeah, psychologically I would say that um, from any standpoint, I mean that's part of the reason why Nike is where it is and that's why Apple is where it is, is because people appreciate good design. So there are lots of things that are associated with that too. If, if your badge looks really nice, people tend to think that it actually has um, more weight, like more psychological weight or more, more meaning behind it. So there's, there's lots of interesting psychology associated just with the way that the badge looks. But again, the badge is a representation of an experience. So, um, so the goal is really to emphasize that experience as much as possible. Perfect, thank you. Uh, so <clears throat> before we move on to our educator use case, the last thing I want to ask you is Bob the librarian is ready to issue the badges to his awesome youth participants. What are the ways that he can do this? Uh, let's start with Carrie. Pretty soon he can use Achievery. Uh, we have a platform that's going to public beta at the end of uh, October. We are uh, in private beta right now, so folks can jump in and try it out. Um, it's a very simple interface. I think I pulled up the screen here somewhere. Let's see if I actually have it. All right, no. <laughs> but uh, there's a very simple badge maker tool in there. Um, you can uh, you know, put in alignments, select what kind of evidence it has, um, what the criteria is, do your badge design right there. Um, so that's, that's one way. Um, so a question about email. that, is it yeah. the 13 plus rule because that's something that I've personally had a trouble with, Carla knows, I bring this up often, is mm -hmm. that you know, only the kids that are 13 and older seem to be able to get a badge unless they go through their parent. Achievery is for 13 
I know there, yeah. Okay. For right now. Okay, great. All right, so well, we'll have to put the link to that uh, in the chat in our lovely Google Docs. So we'll we'll do that. Um, uh, Lucas, is there any particular platform that you like using for issuing badges? Um, I think there are a lot of good ones out there. I uh, I know. Oh, so I think the the thing that carry. I think everybody should check out Carrie's thing. Um, I know there's what is there? There's uh, Badge.us. There's uh, Carla probably has a giant list of people that are making things out there. You know, we we made Badge Forge originally, and you Badge Forge is still online and you can use that for free um, and the, you can actually push badges to um, you know to, to to the badge backpack but I think I, I think with 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 the badge forge anyway people probably want some kind of custom site something that they can do on their own I know there are pl like WordPress plugins and stuff that that are pretty popular as well for people that maybe have the resources to make their own uh, like little custom website or something like that but Carla like I said Carla probably has a, a giant list of the things that are available I've been playing to... with uh, Credly, um, which also actually pushes to the backpack, which is great, and they're really nice. Um, I have no affiliation. I've just that's the one I've been trying out. <laughs> Go yeah, ahead, Carla. Absolutely. Yeah, I was going to say Credly is a, is definitely one a lot of people have been using. Um, and then uh, there's lots of things. So right before this call, it was actually something that we were working on, and somebody from our community was putting together for us. So um, we have some idea of the tools, most of the tools out there, and we're really looking forward to Achievery. And I have to say, I loved Badge Forge. So um, I, I wish it were still kind of an ongoing concern from your standpoint, Lucas. So I'm still trying to figure out ways people could pick it up and run with it. Um, uh, but there's that, and then there's also stuff from Make Waves um, in the UK, and um, and there are a variety of different issuers. What we're trying to do is make sure that everybody understands what tool does what, because there are a variety of tools now, some for issuing, some for creation of badges. Um, I know that we did Badge Studio for the Chicago Summer of Learning, and we're hoping to build that out a, a bit more. Um, and then there are other things that we created, like Open Badger, which was kind of a badge issuing platform, which was a little bit different. So, um, so I know. So our goal, and and everybody else's, I'm assuming here, is kind of this open source thinking when it comes to tools. So that um, let's say you like part of the tool, but you want to pick it up and fork it and do something else with it. So that's really the goal. Is in the same way that open badges are interoperable, we'd love for the tools to be interoperable as well, and people can kind of pick them up and modify them. But it is something we want to make sure gets shared out publicly. So it's just honestly like a request I asked about half an hour ago, which was where are we linking to all these things. So um, I don't know if it's currently on our community site, but it is something that we are aiming to have a direct link to if you're interested in, in this let's say just an issuing tool this badge these tools do this if you're interested in kind of the full service panoply stuff like achievery then this badge or this tool does that I look forward to checking out achievery um, one of the things I really liked about credly was that it allowed us to upload our own badges that we designed or they had some templates where you could just you know add some color and move things around a little bit so going back to my what if you don't have an awesome design resource you know it's somewhere that you can start and it doesn't look horrible so, so that's I think something for folks to consider if they don't have great Photoshop for Illustrator talents. So um, I think the last you know, piece is like how do you display the badges, but I wanted to have us address that as part of our educator use case. So unless you guys had anything else to add for Bob, the librarian, um, I'm going to read out the educator use case and then we'll tackle that. And I know there's probably some overlap from what you've already said, so if you have anything new you want to add, great. But I also think this is a really good opportunity for you to show off um, any of the tools that you want to showcase or processes or whatnot. So please feel free to screen share as you're um, tackling this case. All right, so here we go. Carrie, not the carry in our panel, uh, is a teacher who wants to create a badge system for her classroom. How does she get started? She wants her students to make badges and use peer assessment. She also wants to create badges that she awards at the end of her units. What should she do first? Each of her kids has their own glog. Okay, and let me just pause for a second. I had to look up glog. 
<laughs> I had no idea it was a graphical blog, so I learned something new today. Um, can they display badges on their own site? Carrie also has a Google site she uses. She'd like to display all of the badges on her website. Is there anything out there that like this that she can use? A template, perhaps? Can she do it for free? Which I think is probably one of the most important questions. So there's a lot in there. Um, but if there's something in particular that you know you want to tackle with that use case, great. I can also repeat what I said if I need to. Um, I'll put it in our chat so you guys can read. Um, okay, so. Uh, I think the first question is just how does she get started with these students? You know, um, it sounds like the she wants to use peer assessment, which you guys um, chatted about a little bit earlier. Do you have anything you can showcase? Hey, um, hey, Tara. I just wanted to to just clarify something that was a little fuzzy at the end of that. Um, that isn't doesn't seem quite accurate, mm. um, is that all the badges that any badge that's an open badge actually can be displayed, displayed publicly mm. on their website or on a blog or on their blog, <laughs> um, which is a fine <laughs> drink in, this, in the winter. Um, <laughs> Uh, but um, so so badges don't necessarily need to go through any specific process. If it's an open badge, it actually can be displayed in any of those locations. So there's there's not a tool that's needed in order to do that. Um, you will need to push it to the backpack in order to um, make things private and in order to kind of get URLs to share with other sites from your backpack. So uh, that's but is just there an embed code? Like, can I? Is there embed code now where you can display all the badges? So it sounds like the teacher is, you know, has these badges she's issuing, and she's wondering, you know, can they display? Maybe she has like a, a website. Sounds like, you know, that she's yeah. using with her students. I mean, is there an embed code where she can just plunk it into her site and they all display nicely? Um, are you talking about the individual badges or the or all the badges that are offered from that? I think site? both, right? I mean, I feel like there's a here's all the badges you could potentially um, have issued to you, and then there's mm -hmm. also the here's the badges that the individuals can showcase, like their backpack or whatever, on their own site. Um, so yeah, definitely from uh, you can anybody who's an issuer can share the badges that they can, you can get issued from that site. From a personal um, ownership standpoint, the way that the Open Badges Backpack works right now, the reference implementation, which is just fancy for the example version of the backpack, um, the yeah, you can actually get a URL or get you can put together groups of badges within that that can give you a URL that you can then point people to. Um, I don't know if it's exactly an embed code. I would I would be hesitant to use those ter that terminology right now. Um, but it, it the goal is that you'll be able to share directly from your backpack. So you would so in that case it would be free because you wouldn't need to have any accounts anywhere else. You could, let's say if you wanted to apply for a job, you could actually just send them directly to that. You wouldn't need to be a member of a social network in order to do that. You would need to have a blog. Um, so the backpack in that way is is very effective. Great. Carrie, uh, what about with uh, Achievery, for example? Oh, silent. Here I am again. Uh, with Achievery, um, we are looking at ways to do an, um, embedding badges. We're not, we're not going to be doing that just yet. Um, much like the backpack, you'll be able to share your badges you know, through Facebook and Twitter. Um, but yeah, we're looking at like simple embed codes, just you know, much like you'd have with Facebook or Twitter, where you can just plug in, like copy and paste. This is this badge, and it would reference back to Achievery, where you could actually look at the details of the badge. Um, I also think, in addition to that, uh, right now I think there's a WordPress uh, gadget or plugin, right, that you can actually display badges. Um, so WordPress does have that. Um, but yeah, with Achievery, we definitely you know want to encourage the sharing and showing of badges as much as possible. Oh, there's a WordPress plugin that can be used. That's great. Yes, I'll track it down. Yeah, that I'm would be it. probably really, really helpful. Um, Lucas, did you have anything to add about displaying the badges? Um, probably not on the technical side of the things. I think Carla and Carrie covered it pretty well. But one thing that might be a good intermediate and pretty free step, um, and this is a not technology-based thing, is just to get kids started on that, just have them make them in paper. Have them get construction paper, cut out badges, do the art design themselves, get some glue sticks, and, and write out the criteria with them, or, or, or let them, you know, and then that there that is your design then. So then if you need to transfer, you know, get, give that to somebody or somebody who knows Photoshop or, or whatever, and, and actually make those badges or put those into Achievery. But I, I think that's a good activity too, because then 
you're going to have digital badges eventually, but have the kids help in the design of the things. I, I think that would be a, an interesting kind of kind of an interesting intermediary step before jumping right into the technology. So maybe this is a good transition to maybe talk about your six six step process that you go through, Lucas. Oh, okay, yeah, and this might the uh, I can uh, I'll do a screen share. This might be a a bit uh, maybe robust. For I'm really a, excited uh, to see this. Okay, <laughs> well, so uh, I uh, and this pro the, this process the the six steps that these are the steps that we follow when we go into an organization or into a you know a group that wants to they're at the ground level they want badges they want to start. So, and Carla asked you a good question earlier, do I, do I treat everything like it's curriculum or learning? And not really, but most of the stuff that we deal with is. So that's why most of this process is, it's kind of an instructional design slant on things. So probably not appropriate for every situation, but for the teacher example, it's probably uh, appropriate. So I will do a, uh, a screen share and take everybody through the process. So... I'll move this over here. So, so, so basically, our process is is these six steps. And and step one, and you guys can, if you have any questions, uh, uh, feel free to stop me. But but so uh, the first step is we create personas. A persona is like an archetypal form of, or archetypal representation of the people that would be you know using your system or playing your game or or whatever. And we do them for before and after. So. Who are they when they start the process, and who are they after going through it? So after they've earned all of your badges, who will they be? And then our job, you know, the next step is to make the learning objectives, and the learning objectives are what going to are, are are the things that are going to incrementally get the before persona to the after persona. So when when kids start out, and you know they're they're who they are, and then they learn all these things, and and you know get all, gain all this knowledge and all these skills, and their attitudes change, and then there's somebody after afterwards. And and we make we make the learning objectives. We do it in post-it notes, so they're easy to move around. And we have like a Bloom's Taxonomy scaffold. For anybody that's not familiar with Bloom's Taxonomy, it's a it's it's a big list of uh, verbs essentially, or, or a pyramid of verbs. And and knowledge is at the bottom, and then they go up. It's the their levels of learning essentially, and they get more complex as you go up. So you know, all the way at the top might be something like creating. Um, and we put the post-it notes in there to look for gaps. So maybe you, you you wouldn't want to have a bunch of creating badges, but maybe you haven't built a proper. Oh, I think I lost my uh, screen share. Um, uh, maybe you haven't built up a proper knowledge base in order to to have them doing that, you know. And then I'm gonna re-screen share here. Sorry about that. Um, and then the uh, the next step is we actually convert some of those learning objectives to to you know because not not all of those are going to be um, not all the learning objectives are going to be badges but we'll pick up the ones that we think are appropriate turn those into badge criteria we use the format it's something like I will earn this badge by doing this to this degree on this date or something like that and then we align those with the design taxonomy so that's the it was part of my dissertation research and part of some other things and it's essentially you ask yourself a bunch of questions. One of the questions was brought up earlier: Is it a ta is it a completion task or a measurement task? Is it competitive or cooperative? Is it can the badges be used for currency? Can other people see them? Those kind of questions. Each one of those has a different outcome and a different effect on the badges, and then or you know on the people that earn them. And then finally, um, we make a skill tree. So if anybody's familiar with um, role playing games, there's what they call a skill tree, where your character progresses through the game and and they level up essentially. And as they progress through a skill tree, they get more and more powerful. And we, we treat the badges like that, where, you know, if you're starting off, you're going to earn some knowledge stuff, and then you're going to go up Bloom's Taxonomy, and you'll get essentially more and more powerful, or more, uh, you know, you'll get smarter, you, you'll gain skills as you go through the process. And then the idea is that the harder badges would be at the bottom. And what you've essentially created there is a, is a curriculum. You, you have all the things that you have to accomplish um, and there'll be some ex some extra learning objectives there, and then all the all the badges that you need to earn along the way in order to to validate that that some kind of learning or performance measure was met. So that's our uh, and I say um, easy six step process, and maybe Carla would laugh again because it's maybe too complex. <laughs> maybe it's maybe it's incredibly complex, but we usually do that in like a like a day. So we'll sit with people and and go through the process, plan out their curriculum, um, some of their badges, and then. You know, teach them the process and just kind of step back. So, but I I think a lot of teachers do something similar to this when you're developing a course or when you're so people that have people that have worked with with curriculum design are very familiar with this. It's just there's not a huge leap between curriculum design and then designing you know a, a badge based curriculum. So. 
I love that. I, I, I think the link was put into uh, our live stream chat, which is great. As soon as we're done here, I'm going to start working on that. Do you have the uh, details for each step also um, on your website or just the chart? Uh, I, I have a, another document with the details in it and better artwork. My apologies. That was my uh, my artwork. But yeah, so I, I have a, de a more detailed version which I can share with everybody. And I, I can – I'll Perfect. put up the uh, – the the 14 point decision tree thing too which will uh hopefully help help everybody and out. I think like in the really important uh you mentioned you work with people on badge design so who are yeah. these people yeah. and how do they work with you <laughs> uh so so you are you asking about the like the clients the type of stuff that they're doing or yeah so like if somebody yeah. wanted to work with you specifically oh. hire you to work on badge yeah. design Sure. I mean, a lot of times we do it, like I said, there's a little bit of pre-work where I'll, we'll kind of learn, like our team will learn what their subject matter is. That's part of the part of instructional design is you get to learn about a lot of random things. So, for example, um, you know, sometimes it's a piece of software that they want to, or, or a game. Other times it's just a random subject, so like cooking, and you want to make a bunch of badges for cooking. We have a client now that we're working with on something um, that addresses that, and, you know, we do a little bit of pre-work, learn about their subject matter, and this is like a one-day thing. We do it all on whiteboards with with paper. Um, you know, at the end of it, we'll deliver to them, here are your personas, here are your learning objectives, all of your badges and your criteria, and then ideally I want them to learn the process themselves. So the next time they have to do it or if they want to add badges later on, because these things are, you'll never get this all done in one day. It, it, it's a process, you know, but so if a couple months later you want to add some badges, then just go through the same thing. But 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 it'll really give you a good idea of, what, you know, what you want people to learn, what skills and knowledge you want them to acquire in order to earn these badges. Because I think it's, we need to get away from treating badges like rewards and think of them more as, as goals or, or a way to give people feedback or, you know, things like that. Because there's, I think some of the apprehension about using badges comes from that, that badges are just rewards things, so. I love it. I can't, I can't wait to read the details. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, Carrie or Carla, do you want? Do you guys have anything to share? A template or website with information that you think would be helpful to folks? So, um, yeah, I can go ahead and and uh, and that was fantastic stuff, Lucas. I, Lucas does really amazing stuff, so I'm always happy when I get to see it. Um, so, um, yeah, I'm going to share the the um, worksheet that Tara mentioned a little earlier today. And what this is, and it's gotten a lot more um, in-depth as time has gone by, um, is essentially trying to define things that people need to think about when they start thinking about a bad system design from a kind of an, an overall vision standpoint. And the first thing is really about thinking about who your team is. So are there owners for specific aspects of the bad system? Is there a content owner? Do you have a technical person? Is there a visual design owner? Um, and then also kind of the meta concept is do you have a project manager when it comes to the whole system? Because you might have individuals who are responsible for each one of these things and and then someone who needs to oversee and make sure that the system itself is pretty coherent. Um, but recognizing that not all the badges need to actually align with um, everything that you say your stated goal is for your system. So what, what's not on here, it's actually really worthwhile and, and noting, is the idea that um, you really want to sit down and one of the first things you want to do is define what the goals of your system are and and maybe you have the top three goals and just getting to that point is actually a big step forward so understanding um, that everybody on your team may have slightly different visions of what the future looks like and where everybody's headed so making sure that everybody is aligned with what those goals are before you get um, kind of started underway when it comes to badges is really meaningful and useful. Um, and then things like um, all the, the kind of the next level is this badge info, things like badge name. Do you have types of badges that you're offering? Are there categories or things like participation or attendance or skill, achievement, um, learning, association? Um, and then what's the purpose of the badge? Just to be able to give a kind of nutshell overview of what a badge, what you're aiming with with that one badge. Um, and then a description, which is really the thing that's going to be ending up on your website or ending up somehow being communicated to the general public about what is this badge about so that someone might have the idea that it might be something that they want to pledge towards or it might represent learning that they admire and would like to pursue. And then the criteria, so it's, that's the kind of in-depth concept. And, our context. 
And then things like evidence, assessment type, um, are there minimum requirements associated with this badge? Um, what, how long does it take someone to earn this badge? So getting to your question a little earlier, Tara, about um, can, when you dice things up, um, or do you want to dice things up? Do you want to have one large meta badge, or do you want to have a series of small kind of foundational or atomic level badges? Um, does your badge have levels? Um, so getting to um, Lucas's point a little earlier about uh, I, I tend to shy away from the bronze, silver, gold because that metaphor is, is a little hacky, but people totally get it. So if, it, if um, so, understanding do your badges have kind of example or levels that you move through just within one badge type? Um, do they accumulate towards other things? You know, do they align with certain standards? Can you include that in the in the metadata? Um, and then things like um, when people will find out about their badges. So um, are there notifications? How will someone be alerted that they just earned a badge? Um, is a badge a stealth badge? Does it get issued because someone has done a series of things that they didn't know they were actually going to get a badge issued for? Um, and then how does someone get notified? And at what point does someone get notified? And then how's the badge going to be issued from a technological standpoint? Who's going to be, what kind of tools are you going to use? And then finally, um, the design, the graphic of the design. Um, so those are, and, and I mentioned a little earlier, just this like column V is actually going to be blown out into its own spreadsheet. And most likely the badge tech could be blown out into its own spreadsheet. But it is something that we are thinking about all the time. Just these are kind of, kind of top level things to think about, but they're also a little bit more in depth um, as you start to build through them. And this is actually a public Google spreadsheet that anybody can have access to. And it's useful to just kind of, and Tara, you experienced this already, to kind of once you start to see all your badges listed together, it also gives you a much better understanding of how they start to interact with one another. Wonderful. That spreadsheet has been so helpful to me. I highly recommend using that, um, anyone. And uh, I know some of the folks are asking for a link to it, so um, hopefully John, the wonderful John Barroloni in the background can find that link from Carla and add it to the chat in our Google Doc. Um, we have to start wrapping up in just a moment here, but Carrie, I wanted to make sure that you had a chance if there's anything that you wanted to, to share. Do you have any, I mean, I know that you shared Achievery, which is awesome, but is there any processes or templates or anything you wanted to share? Yeah, uh, we have an onboarding sort of a template. I don't, I don't have access to it right now. Um, although that spreadsheet is really incredible. I think I might take a second look at it. Um, I, my role at Coterie is not necessarily doing these types of things, but Damien does spend a lot of time going through very specific questions just like that. Um, I tend to think more about, um, you know, what the technology is needed. You know, um, how can, do you have a website and you want to issue the badges from your website? Or, you know, are you looking just for a tool where, that you can just use? So um, that, that's more of, the process that I think about the most. Perfect. Thanks, Carrie. Okay, so you each get a minute to provide any final thoughts um, around badge design. Um, so let's start with Lucas. Okay. Um, so I, I, when I get preachy about badge stuff, I think I kind of touched on what I what I would say anyway earlier, which is we need to stop thinking about badges as something that are just rewards. Think of, think about them as being goals that people can set for themselves or feedback for a performance. And, and I think when we start thinking about them that way, um, it's going to change how we design badge systems. And I started, I said this earlier, I started, I say badge curriculum now because we work with a lot of educational stuff. And when we design badge systems, we design them like, like a curriculum. And I, I think that's a, something something that if anybody's working in education I think it's something that they should consider so and thanks for having me thank you Lucas Carrie I a thousand percent agree with Lucas um, badges aren't just stickers you know um, a badge represents a quality that's already there so if somebody's here on this call right now they probably already have a high quality program and badges sort of represent what what is already there it's just um, um, adding like value to that, uh, representing that kind of value. I also think it's really important to think about um, what happens after you get the badge. Um, you know, the badge earners and the badge, uh, we've been calling them like badge consumers, but you know, the people who are looking at the badges and what comes out of that at the end? You know, when do our systems get to talk to each other? You know, each of us might be making all different kinds of badges, but how do we start, you know, making badges together? Um, I think that's what's going to be really interesting as this ecosystem grows. 
Thank you. Thanks, Carrie. Thanks for trying out Google Plus Hangouts for the first time. You did marvelously. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Carla. So um, one thing that I want to just, I love to emphasize is that bad systems allow people to rethink all kinds of things, um, assessment, um, how, what, what gets acknowledged, how it gets acknowledged, and if you fall back to what's kind of traditionally acknowledged or represented, you're essentially recreating the system. This is an opportunity to think way outside of where you are currently. What are the things you'd love to see acknowledged? What are the things that keep getting like lost in the system that you would love to see um, someone get represented or be able to have their information represented in some way? And so do not get stuck in the current standards of learning or current standards of like acknowledgement within social environments use badges in this kind of new transformative way to start to think about um, in a new a more perfect world um, what might be the things you would like to see acknowledged and recognized and then start to develop your badge system based on that and I think you'll be really happy wonderful okay so let's see I have to wrap up here so again thank you all for the fantastic conversation I know personally I've taken away a lot of things um, as we're thinking about our badge design and I will be pinging all of you um, by tomorrow we should have a full recording of this webinar and other curated content up on connected learning TV that you can share with your networks and then there was a lot today so um, let's make sure we capture as much as we can uh, this wraps up our final webinar of this month-long series but that doesn't mean that our conversations have to end here I've already noticed people sharing their Twitter handles um, ready to continue talking about it um, we encourage everyone to keep this energy going by continuing to use the Twitter hashtags DML badges, open badges, and connected learning, and by getting involved in the connected learning Google Plus community. Next week, we are launching our next month of webinars with mobileed.org, looking at how mobile technology is enabling more openly networked and inquiry based learning. Check out connectedlearning.tv for more information. Thank you, everyone, and thank you, everyone, for chatting on the live stream. I was reading through, and you guys um, have a lot of great information there, too, for everyone to share. Thanks, everyone. Bye.